Righty. Welcome to the second week of Nebula 2. We're delighted to have you here. This is the Tools Week. Um, and so we're just going to run through some of our standardized reminders and then we will pass things over to the actual call kickoff. First of all, we have captions. These are available uh, if you look on your Zoom menu at the bottom. For me, I have to click more, but then there's the option to click CC captions. Um, and I can choose either just to show captions um, in English right now, or if I prefer, I can actually say, look at what people are saying in English and translate it into my preferred language. Um, I am actually, unfortunately, hyper aware that uh, not all languages have e equal representation in translation. So there's a possibility that your preferred languages might not be in that list. Um, but fingers crossed that we have some decent support. I'm guessing that there will be quite a few languages there nonetheless. Um, so, yep, that's up to you. You don't have to use captions, uh, but it can be helpful, especially if you get distracted, if you're deaf or hard of hearing, um, or maybe you're finding it hard to understand me and my weird accent. All of these are good. Um, we will put this call on YouTube later. Um, we have some breakout rooms. Breakout rooms do not go onto YouTube. Those are completely private. Um, so even if you'd rather not have your uh, camera on now, you can turn it on in the breakout room and nothing gets recorded. Um, and finally, uh, last thing, oh no, not quite last thing, um, breakout rooms. So as I mentioned, we will be having breakout rooms and we have two different ways of interacting in breakout rooms. One is spoken, like I'm speaking right now. Um, but the other way is to interact via writing. So that means you either type in the uh, notepad or alternatively in the Zoom chat. Um, and that might be because um, of many different reasons. It could be you have a baby sleeping and you don't want to wake them up. It could be um, that you are deaf. It could be that you just prefer it or your internet is a bit slow. There's many different reasons. Um, so what we do when we put people in breakout rooms is we ask you to express whether you would prefer W written breakout rooms or S for spoken breakout rooms. Uh, so I am going to actually change my name in Zoom and that way when we're sorting people into rooms we know which rooms to put them in. For example um, I'm looking at my portrait in Zoom and I click on the three blue dots, oh, sorry it's a white dots on a blue background um, on my portrait and then I can click on rename uh, and I am going to say I prefer a written breakout room today so I'll put W in front of my name. Uh, can I get everyone else to follow along and do the same uh, either written or spoken choose your preference and if you're having trouble with that then please um, let us know in chat let Austin or um, message me and I can actually add the W or the S in front on your behalf. Um, yeah, and last thing before I hand this over to Austin to introduce our speakers for today is Code of Conduct. Uh, so this is just a quick reminder, but uh, despite being quick, it is not uh, less significant. Treat one another with the respect that you would like to uh, receive. So there is always a lot more of that than just saying, be nice. Um, if you want to look at more of the details, go to line 45 in the Etherpad. There's a link to the OLS Code of Conduct. Um, and if at any point you feel like people are not behaving in a way that is in line with the Code of Conduct, whether it's about yourself or whether it's about someone else that you've, you've witnessed, you can report that by emailing either the OLS team which is team at weareOLS.org. You can see that on line 47. Or you can email any of the individuals. Uh, that's myself, Movika, um, or Irene, and our email addresses are on line 48. Um, I have spoken plenty. Austin, would you like to kick off the presentations? Ah, you you were amazing. Uh, thank you so much for the, that introduction. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, welcome everyone once more. Uh, it's so exciting to just can't wait to have our first presentation and the Japsia is ready for us to present on a very important topic uh, on the, the aspect of tools. Yeah, so open by, by design across the project. 
So Jafsia is ready to present to us and we can't just wait to hear from him and his lady. Uh, I hope everyone is ready to have uh, more, to learn more about uh, what open by design across a project it means. Yeah, so this is this is really amazing. Uh, and uh, I hope we'll be able to get uh, uh, most of the aspects that uh, our presenter will put across. Okay, uh, Jopsia, are you ready to present to us? Yes, uh, uh -huh. Austin, thank you. Great, great, my brother, all the best. Okay, I've started sharing my screen. So. Good afternoon, everyone, because here is still, we are still at 5 p.m. So the session today, session three, is about open tools and resources and will be presented by me. My name is uh, Jafsia Elise. I'm currently the program officer at Conciliation Resources. Uh, Conciliation Resources is uh, a UK-based organization uh, which is involved in peace consolidation in uh, Central Africa. So because actually I'm based in Bangui, Central Africa Republic. And I'm a program officer at the East and Central Africa program, which uh, headquarters are in Nairobi in Kenya. So actually um, I've started since four months and uh, I'm trying to, to give my best to the program. So based on what we are going to listen today, we will start first by some reflections. I will ask you to take some minutes to reflect on the following question and uh, to write your thoughts, either in the notepad or in the chat. And the questions are, how can I best collaborate on writing software? What can I share? How can I share? How can I best share the result of my project? When should I make my data publicly available? How long should I plan to maintain my software? Where am I going to store all that I collect? How can I best collaborate on writing software? So please feel free to write something in the notepad or in the chat. Okay, collaborate on software using GitHub by making my project open. So that's Henri. Rania is about using GitHub. Yes, of course, uh, collaboration uh, on writing uh, software mainly, uh, mainly using GitHub. Uh, each one uh, can have uh, a GitHub client and the uh, post uh, uh, the changes and something like that to GitHub. Uh, GitHub is uh, the most commonly used. Hello? Yes, Rania, you were talking. Yes, you hear you hear my uh, answer. Yes, I've I've heard it. So thank you for your contribution. Yes, we can effectively collaborate on software using got GitHub because GitHub is uh, a version control software. Mm. So thank you for the contribution. Okay, if we don't have other contributions. Let's jump directly to our part one. 
The part one today is about uh, open by design across a project. So we know that open tools and resources encompasses uh, various approaches and practices that can promote transparency, collaboration, and accessibility in, uh, in research. And uh, those tools and uh, resources are generally uh, about open access. So the first tools and resource that we will have is open access. And open access is there to ensure free and unrestricted access to research outputs, including journal articles, preprints, and other scholarly works. And uh, examples for open access journal, you have PLOS One, you have Frontiers, uh, you have for institutional repositories, you have the MIT DSPACE, and for preprint, you have archives and bioarchives. In second position, you have open collaboration, just like Rania was talking. Here is to encourage collaboration and knowledge sharing about researchers uh, to foster a culture of openness and inclusivity. Examples, you have open science communities, just like we are here with mm -hmm. Open Life Science, OLS, and Open Seeds. You have collaborative tools like Etherpad or the Notepad that we are filling, actually. You have ArcMD. Uh, for Ax, uh, Latex users, you have tools like Overlift. In third position, you have Open Peer Reviews. And Open Peer Reviews are uh, help us mainly to adapt transparent and inclusive peer reviews processes to allow us for community constructive feedback and quality assurance. Examples are open peers, just like we said before, we have pre-publication peer reviews platform. And for open peers reviews, we still have Plus one, and uh, from plus one, you, you also have uh, F1000 Research, which is a platform offering open peer review and allowing authors to choose licenses that suits their needs. For pre-publication peer review platform, you have Archive, uh, which is a preprint repository that allows authors to share their research before formal publication. And also, author can choose a license for their work. Um, bio uh, mainly focusing on biological sciences. Then you have open source. And open source is there to promote the use of open source softwares and tools to allow for transparency, customization, and sharing of research tools. Examples, we have open source software, programming languages and tools for data analysis like R, Python, and Jupyter Notebook. We also have uh, open data. Open data are there to, for sharing research data in a transparent and accessible manner, enabling verification, replication, and reuse. And example for open data, we have data repositories, we have data sharing platform and data publication policies. For data repositories, you have Zenodo, which is developed by the CERN that allows researchers to share and publish their research output, including data sets, publication and presentation. Zenodo also supports a variety of files formats and offer a DOI, Digital Object Identifier, that I think we'll have a session about it, more, more, more to, to explain what exactly a Digital Object Identifier has for, and they are used for easy citation. You also have for data repository, we have fixed share and data site. For data sharing platform, like Rania said, we have GitHub, uh, which was firstly a code hosting platform 
but it also allows researchers to share data set, particularly for, for project involving software development and data analysis. It supports vision, version control, and collaboration through repositories. Uh, for open science frameworks, uh, which is OSF, it's a free and open platform to support the entire research life cycle, including data sharing and collaboration. It allows researchers to store, share, and manage their research outputs, including data sets. For open data, we also talked about uh, uh, data publication policies. And the main policy is the fair data principles. And fair data principles are a set of guidelines aimed at making data findable for F, accessible for A, interoperable for I, and reusable for the R. So many journals and funding agencies now require adherence to this principle for data publication. Oh, actually, we have the FAIR principle, and sometimes you will also find the FAIR C, which is quite close to the FAIR principle, but the C is just for compliance. So you will either find FAIR or FAIR C principles. So after having reviewed the tools and resources, now let's talk about the open by default or the open by design. This diagram depicts the open science workflow diagram. And in the dark blue session, this is the initial planning stage. And the initial planning stage begins with ideation, which is the conceptual phase, then includes the planning as a distant step, future project planning as a major component, and then proposal branch out a key deliverable. Data management plans, code of conduct, are shown as a foundational document. In T light blue section, is that's the implementation stage. We have engagement and training phase, which are supported by tutorials contribute, and contributor guidelines. And these are here to ensure participants in this, understand protocol and procedures. Within the implementation stage, we still have, we also have data collection phase, which links to raw data, metadata, and creation. And this will represent primary research activities. We have the data wrangling phase, which are connected to analysis pipeline and focusing on data cleaning and preparation. We have the data exploration phase where we produce codes, notebooks. This represents the analytical work we are doing. And the final stage in the workflow is about dissemination, the dissemination stage, which is in the green section. Here we are reporting and publishing as primary outputs. We have preservation as a distant phase, archives as a permanent repository, and also multiple output format listed. Example are papers, talk, blogs, video, and tweets, et cetera. And here in the open science workflow diagrams, the open science principle demonstrated are transparency in planning and execution, documentation at every stage, multiple forms of output for broader accessibility, preservation and archiving emphasize. We have public engagement through various media, clear, clear guidelines and protocol, and reproducible research practices. Now, from the workflow, then what is open by default or open by design? So open by default refers to the practice of making research output openly accessible and available by default, unless there are specific reasons or restrictions for not doing so. 
open by design refers to the intentional cooperation. So I will emphasize on the word intentional. Intentional incorporation of open practices throughout the research process from planning, data collection to analysis, publication and dissemination. But now that we are defined, open by default and open by design, let's be practical. So let's apply it, the two principles, those two elements, open by default and open by design, to a project. So to be practical, I will apply it to one of my, of my projects when I was also a mentee at OLS. And my project was from invisible to citizens, apparent age for children in Northern Cameroon without birth, birth certificates. Let's implement this project by open by default. First step is about proactive transparency. We have automatic updates. So I've set up a project platform that hosts all relevant information, including project goals, timeline, budget, and project with progress reports. Then a public document repository. I've created a centralized online repository where all project documents including meeting notes, reports, research finding, and uploaded are uploaded automatically. Second element in the open by default, we have inclusive participation, open invitation to meetings, so to schedule regular committee forums and workshops with public invitations sent out through various channels, social media, community board, local radio. You have the community advisory board, and this one, this element was advised by my mentor to have a community advisory board. So it's to establish a community advisory board that includes parents, local leaders, and representatives from NGOs. Then the third element was the continuous feedback. And the feedback element mechanism was to implement tools such as online survey, suggestion boxes that stakeholders can access at any time. And finally, regular review session to conduct quarterly review session open to all stakeholders to discuss project progress and gather feedback. So based on the open by default, you have proactive transparency, you have inclusive participation, and you have continuous feedback. With the same approach and the same project, Let's jump into the open by design. In the open by design, we don't have proactive transparency. We have transparency. And now we have public progress reports. It's to develop a dedicated project platform that includes regular updates on milestone, budget expenditure, and challenges in contact. Now we have challenges, which is part of our design. We have community meetings to hold monthly community meetings to present updates and gather feedback. We have collaboration. Here we have the stakeholder engagement. So we'll, here we'll hold stakeholder engagement workshop. Here is to organize workshop with parents, for example, local leaders and community organization to identify barriers to birth registration and co-create solution. Here you have the co-creation element. We have to partner with local NGOs because they are the ones who knows the field. But one thing what happened to us when we wanted to collaborate with local NGO, they didn't want to share that their data with us. So we were that took us lots of time because uh, we were obliged to collect our data by ourselves without uh, when lots of NGO were there before us, but they didn't want to share their data with us. Then accessibility. So you have created an open data platform where all project related documents, research funding and registration statistics are available to the public. 
you have multilingual resources is to provide project material in multiple language and format, e.g. brochure, video, to ensure that all community members, regardless of literacy level, can access information about the project and the importance of birth registration. So let me ask a simple question. So based on those two approach, open by design and open by default, what do you think is the best one King uh, wants his project to, to include openness in his project. You can either write in the chat or in the notebook, or maybe you can unmute and then answer the question uh, or answer the question asked. Okay, for Byman is, for me, I think it is open by design. Why in open by design? Okay, thank you. For me also is open by design. And why open by design? The open by design approach is the best, best option because it prioritizes active collaboration between community members and local leaders, ensuring that their voices and insights shape the project direction from the very beginning. It empowers not only families, but also local leaders to engage meaningfully in the decision-making process, fostering a sense of ownership and shared responsibility. And the strong emphasis on building relationship and trust between stakeholders enhances transparency and accountability, ultimately leading to higher registration rates and improved access to essential services. So it means that open by design, just like you said, creates a sustainable framework for advocacy and support, making it the most effective strategy for achieving project objectives. So here is uh, the end of the first part of my presentation. Uh, I don't know if you have some questions. So I'm now ready for, for your questions. Before uh, we are, we, we go to the breakout rooms for an exercise. Well, Steen, though, um, could you read out the question that's a little way up from Olawa Funmilaya? Okay, uh, where, where is it? It's actually in the chat. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you scroll up to 18 minutes past the hour, you'll see it. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me check. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, you know, I think there seems to be a question from Amin. It says, are open peer review platforms free? I think that's the question. Uh, open peer review platforms free. That's the question. Thank you, Yo. I, 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 didn't, I didn't notice about it. Josia, would, would you like to take that one now? Uh, open peer review okay, platform. Thank you, platform. Uh, th thank you, Austin. Open peer review platforms are free. And uh, as I, I, I have enumerated them, most of them are free. And the major ones, the major ones as platform, you have F1000 Research, you have PRG, you have Science Open, you have MDPI's journals, and, and also you have Plus One. 
And for preprints, just like I've enumerated before, you have bio archives, you have met archives, you have archives or pre put met. That's those uh, open peer reviews are, are all free. Okay. Um, any question, I mean? Is it okay with you? Um, we don't seem to have any question here. Okay, if we don't have... We've just had another one come in. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, uh, we, ha we have one um, from my mom. Under which category can we classify commercial research? Open by design or open by default? Can we even consider them as open? That's the question from my mom. Javsi, can you take that one up? Under which category can we classify commercial research? Open by design or open by default? Can we consider them as open? That's the question from my mom. Commercial is about commercial research. Yeah, under which category can we classify commercial research? Um, so he's talking about what she's talking about commercial research. Is it open by design or open by default? Is it possible to consider them as open? Okay, there's uh from my view, it's impossible to implement okay. uh, by commercial design. research. Is typically uh, they are typically not open by design because uh, for commercial research you have business motivation behind them. So if you have business motivation behind them, there are some protection of intellectual property. Okay, and uh, you have also to keep competitive advantage maintenance. So it it, it makes that uh, it's really difficult for you. Uh, uh, when you are working on commercial research, you will mainly work, it will be uh, an open by default, not open by design, because of the protection of intellectual property. You have trade things like trade secret laws, you have things like confidentiality clauses, you have proprietary information protection, so it's really difficult for you to have it open by design. So you will mainly have it by default. Or not open at all? Or maybe not open at all, or closed. Uh, I think uh, open by default is more realistic uh, than open by uh, design. It's impossible to implement open by design in all projects. OK, thank you. So if you have any question, please. Jan, go to Notepad and then you like you have any question, please just post and then uh, Jeff will be, will be more than interested to, to respond to the question. Thank you so much, uh, Jeffsia. Unless if there are any questions. Um, folks, Rania's been cut off twice. <laughs> I know she's trying to speak, but I think we have some lag. Hello, Yo. Yes. Um, is anyone else getting um, Austin with quite a bit of lag? Yo, you're, you're breaking up. Uh, it, there seems to be a uh, bad connection with the. Oh, these are the questions. Um, Irene, oh, what's your point of view? <laughs> Who's breaking up? <laughs> You hear me? Yeah, Rania, please go ahead. I know we have interrupted you twice, uh, but... Yes, um... I, uh, from my view, uh, I think uh, open by design is impossible to implement uh, in reality. Uh, open by default is more realistic and the more uh, easy to implement uh, 
because not all countries, not all regions are agree to make their platform open by design. You you get my point? We do, yeah. Um, my voice Shasia, is clear. Your voice is clear. Um, I think we're just having some connection issues. <laughs> um, Jafsia, I'm curious yeah. if you have any response to um, Rania's point that sometimes um, open by design isn't practical? Well, I think um, which is more practical, I think uh, both can be uh, it depends. It depends on the objective that's uh, or your intention, because we, we talked about. I, I put. I have put in uh, an emphasis on a term. Intentional. Everything will come from the intention. So if you have the intention, I think uh, from the, the word intention. Open by design seems more realistic for me because you have the intentional planning. You have intentionally planned your project. You have planned resource allocation. You have designed a clear documentation protocol. You have structured a clear sharing mechanism. And you have also defined your privacy control. So I think uh, for me, from the intentional planning, open by design seems more realistic. And also for practical benefits, let's say that if you have intentionally decide to open something, you can manage the workflows. That's the practical benefit. You can scale your systems. And also, you can have a cost-effective implementation of your project. So I think, uh, from my point of view, it may be wrong. But I think uh, open by design is more realistic, and open by default less realistic. And why open by default seems to me that realistic? It's about implementation challenges. You have privacy concerns, you have compliance issues, you have things like resource intensive that can limit you. That's why uh, I'm thinking that maybe open by default will be less realistic than open by design. Chaps, yeah, are, are, are you there? Yes. Irene, your hand is up. Yes, Irene. Thank you. So just uh, wanted to compliment that discussion between open by design and open by default uh, by sharing one experience where uh, my programming in my PhD program, I think it leans towards open by default uh, because we have like very strict um, and very unflexible um, kind of recommendations about the places where we can publish. And to me, that is open by default because there isn't a conversation around um, designing, you know, the process of being open and involving the community of students who might want to publish other places. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so even then, mm -hmm. I see this as a step uh, towards being more open because before this, there wasn't um, any recommendations about publishing in open access and with journals. And so I don't see whether, I don't see open by design and open by default as necessarily good or bad. But in this example, open by default is hopefully like one step towards open by design. Um, so again, I think it's more like a um, kind of a balance of requirements and um, especially in places where openness is not yet mainstream, where there might be a still like many um, 
misunderstanding about what open by design is, and also just limited resources to implement um, more thoughtful practices across a project. Thank you, Irene. Shall we go to breakout rooms? I think so. Who's introducing what we're doing again? Because um, I think we had a lot. We, Thank we you for the contribution. Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, it's all, it's almost done. The internet is not being kind to us today. <laughs> I'm going to do a quick reminder and open the rooms again. Uh, so folks, 10, 10 minutes in breakout rooms. The idea is um, we can see that there's lots of different discussions that people are interested in having. Um, around openness and the way that you share your work. Uh, so take 10 minutes, discuss it in your room, and maybe you want to talk about the data, the software, the publications that you're currently using um, or that you want to use and whether they're open or closed. Um, and maybe also take some of the open by design versus default uh, discussion there and see what your breakout roommates have. Um, I'm going to give everyone 10 minutes in the rooms. Um, we have a few people who haven't added S or W in front of your name to choose whether you prefer spoken or written. Uh, so if you have a minute now, do. If not, I will ask you and then we'll send you off as well. Uh, so I'm going to open all the rooms and we will come back in 10 minutes. Okay, um, just checking, Aminu, um, do you have any preferences? And Ala, do you prefer spoken or written? Oh, we should pause the recording. License prevent. This license prevents commercial use of the original work. This is good for educators or creators who want to restrict commercial exploitation. You have the CC by NCSA, which is attribution, non-commercial, share alike. This is similar to CC by NC, but any derivative work must be licensed under identical terms. Attribution is required and come useful also for educational resources that creators want to keep non-commercial. And then you have also the CC by NCND, which is attribution non-commercial, no derivative. So this is the most restrictive license. Others can download the works and share them with others as long as they credit the creator, but they can't change them in any way or use them commercially. So this one is best for creators who want to maintain strict control over their work. How to choose and step to add an open license to your project? The first step is to assess your goals, for sharing, then to understand your audience. After that, to consider the type of resource you have. Visit the Creative Common website. So the chooser of Creative Common. Follow the steps, select the license, add 
license information to your resource. Okay. At this point, let's go to Google and to Google a license chooser and see how we can behave as a tutorial, how we can get our license. Sorry, Jeff, you're just double checking. What are we supposed to be doing now? Okay, do you see my screen? We are doing a tutorial on uh, uh, how to choose okay. a license. Yeah, we can see okay, your now, Chrome now. Let's go to, let's <laughs> go to Creative Common. Uh, sorry, just, yeah, just a question. Uh, participants also. Hello. Sorry for interruption. Are yes. participants also to just observe or they are supposed also to put this on their own? So it depends on them. Make them okay. Kind of, okay. It will be better that they, they practice. Okay. Okay. So now that okay. we have, Thank you. we have creative comments. We jump to choose a license. You have the license chooser web page that will be displayed. And now we have to follow the steps to select the appropriate license for your work. So first step, do you know which license you need? If I say yes, that's okay. But if I say no, I can say yes and click next. So I will just be asked to select which license I want to, to choose. But if I don't, if I don't and, and I say no, the next step will be, do you want attribution for your work? Yes, definitely. You want attribution for your work. Recommended. At the right, you will see your rate. Recommended license, CC by 4.0. This license requires that reusers give credit to the creator. It allows reuser to distribute, remix, adapt, and build upon the material in any medium or format, even for commercial purposes. If you are okay with this, you can click next. Do you want to allow others to use your work commercially? You say no, you are working on open. It's an open project. So you don't want others to use your work commercially. You click no. And then this is Creative Common Attribution Non-Commercial 4.0 International. You have the description of your license here. Then you move again. Do you want to allow others to remix adapt or build upon your work if you say yes maybe let's go to next we have the non-commercial attribution to our license now do you want to allow others to share adaptations of your work under any terms Let's see, yes, and move forward. Now that we are finished, you have to confirm that CC licensing is appropriate for you. So you will say, I, I own or have authority to license the work. I have read, I understand that CC licensing is not recoverable. Next, I have made, and now I have to do the attribution of my work, title of the work. Let's see, moving forward. Creator of the work is Jane. 
linked to the work creation 2024. Let's see, done. You have it here now. Moving forward at 2024 by Jane, license under CC by NC 4.0. So here in the right, you will have mark your work. If it is for a website, if you want it for a website, if you want to mark down or the XMP, you can download the metadata. Or if you want to print, you want to print the text, you can use the plain text and copy. It will all depends on you. So let's go back. If everything is clear, let's go back to our presentation. So we were following the steps on how to add an open license to our work. So you have the, com the Creative Commons Open uh, License Chooser, which is straightforward and quite easy to use. Now that you have your open your license, what are the best practices open license. The best practices for open life creator of the world. We need the name and the license you are using. You used we want the link to the online source. This can work, but must be a full URI if license is non a non-digital work. Whether required or advice, include a credit to the project funding body. For example, if you have to include the credit, a credit to the project funding, the statement that you will use should follow the CC license text. And an example could be, this project was funded by for dash dash and under dash dash dash. This will follow the text that you have copied from Creative Commons on you have chosen license. Still on best practices for open licensing, you still have attribution, which is the CC license information, is typically displayed. And how to display it? If it's a document. You have to display it at the beginning or end of a document. Footer of a web page. The image in the caption of the image for the video at the beginning or the end of the video. If it is metadata, you have to associate it with the metadata. And so I would say that there is no one way of doing open science. And any step you take to make your science more open are extremely valuable. Whether open resources, open tools, or open licensing. So especially as we transition to a more open scientific ecosystem in the future, open science tools and resources provide a plan for how open science is integrated into a project, including a sharing of data, software, and results. This is the end of the second part of the presentation. Maybe if you have questions, you can unmute and ask them, or maybe share your question in the chat or in the notepad. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jafsia, for that presentation. Uh, colleagues, if you have any question, please just drop in in the chat, or you can go to the notepad, just drop in the question, and then Jafsia is there to, to respond to that question. Please, if you have any question, please just drop by and, uh, in the chat or in the notepad, then you'll be able to you'll be able to assist in terms of answering that question. Thank you so much. Um, Yo, I, I, are you allowed? I'm afraid so. Okay, uh, while well, we're waiting for you, yes. <laughs> uh, we'll come back. 
Yeah, sure. Welcome back. Um, are we supposed to go to breakout sessions activity as well? Or we are, maybe members or participants have uh, some questions on the first one we'd have to discuss from the first breakout session activity? So we are learning out on time at the same time. Yeah, yeah we have about, um, mm. we have to do some announcements at the end of the call as well. Um, so yeah. I'm going to suggest yeah, sure. maybe um, let's read out the questions because um, we have another one that's just come in. But it might be good to also read the okay. question about software licenses just so that it goes onto the recording and maybe then pass over to Irene. Okay. Uh, the, the first question is, aside research Gate and Google Scholar, which other platforms can I share my already published article to gain visibility? Once more, the question from Amin, aside ResearchGate and Google Scholar, which other platforms can I share my already published article to gain visibility? Josia, would you like to take that one up? Thank you, Austin. Uh, I think uh, some platform where you have academic network or seed, you have social science research network, SSRM, which are uh, also good academic network to share your published article if you are seeking visibility. You have uh, professional platforms like Semantic Scholar, you can publish on Semantic Scholar. You can also publish on Zenodo, which is also quite straightforward. Uh, if it's your research is subject specific, if it is subject specific, as we said in the beginning, you have archives for physics, maths, and computer science. You have bio archives for biology. Uh, you have field papers for philosophy, I think. Uh, maybe you can also share them on social media for academics. You have uh, lots of academic community of Mastodont. I think that's the, the most preferred platform uh, by academics. You can share your work there to have visibility too. So those are some examples. Uh, and also tips for maximum impact that I would suggest are to maybe to join relevant groups if you want visibility, to link to your or seat. That's very important. I think these, these are the two advice, Simon, if you want to get maximum impact with your research work. I'm just gonna um, quickly add my voice in uh, support of that last bit that you said, Jassia, that sometimes interacting with people, um, you know, joining networks uh, is actually more likely to uh, promote your, uh, your research than I would say than posting it on yet another technical platform. Um, yeah, um, that's a reasonable request. Uh, can you put the names that you were suggesting um, into the chat or maybe even into the notes might be better because then it will stay after the chat, okay. uh, Jassia? Yes, I'll do it. Let me write it in the chat. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. I think we have another question. Yeah, is it okay um, if I take from, this one from, while Jassia is writing Clara? down? Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, you, um, please. So, Clara, um, you're asking um, if the Creative Commons licensing tool generates correct categorization. Um, so, that's not quite uh, what's going on there. The idea is um, that the different elements like non commercial and no derivatives. Um, and share alike, that those um, 
those are all optional it's basically different ways of you controlling the different ways people might share your work or not share your work or reuse your work so um, I would think of it more like saying if you want maximum control then you'd like select yes um, and select all of the CC by ND NC SA um, but personally I tend to license things CC by because I want rather than having full control I want a large amount of openness And the only thing I'll say instead is just please credit me. Um, so it's sort of like allowing you to choose just how much control you want um, as a way of keeping your work um, still clearly your own. Um, it's probably the best way I would say. Um, so it, it's less about categorizing the object and more about categorizing your wishes, um, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah, thank you, Yo, for taking that question up. Okay, um, yeah, thank you, Jobs, Jobs, for for uh, putting up those notes in the uh, for those details in the chat as well. Thank you so much. Uh, there is a question here. Uh, Yo, can 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 I read it out? I think we need uh, to skip. Says for, oh, okay, okay, thank you. If, if you're talking about the exercise? Uh, no, there's another question oh. from Amin. Oh. Yeah, in the chat. I think we're going to have to answer that uh, one afterwards and probably pass on to Irene. Uh -huh. So it's time for closing. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah, very true. Very true. Thank you so much, Austin okay. and Jeff. See ya. Um, so Irene is the uh, the boss of the cohort, um, and she's you've probably been getting all of our emails, um, but she's been taking a bit mm -hmm. of time off, and uh, she just needs to share a couple of quick announcements around how we're going to be handling the coaching sessions. Irene, over to you. Thank you, Phil. I'm going to share my screen really quickly. Um, and Jeff, I'm going to replace your slides for a moment. Okay. Okay. Are you seeing my slides? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Joe. Um, I wanted to share a preview of what you can expect for the coaching sessions, which is the other big component of the program, and that we're going to start during week three. Uh, four, five, and six. Uh, so by now, you have already met Virginia and Jafsia. They are two of the experts who are joining us for the program, uh, but we have eight more experts, so four, seven more experts. We have nine experts in total. And aside from providing the training calls, they will also be joining for coaching sessions. Uh, you will get to meet them. Uh, again, like we're, we're really proud of the team of experts who are joining the program. Um, as a reminder, many of them um, also um, were the people who originally developed the materials for NASA and that are used not only for this program, but for um, other online courses. And so these sessions are optional. Uh, these are if you have some time, some extra time to join, aside from the training sessions, you're very welcome to sign up for the coaching as well, but it's optional. We know that uh, the program is already very um, heavy and uh, you're already putting a lot of effort and time into coming. So if you want to um, come as well for the coaching sessions, that is totally fine, um, but they are optional and they require a little bit more effort and homework. Um, so this optional coaching sessions are going to be around a team. I remember last call, uh, there are a few people um, all finding together that they were from a marine biology background along with Virginia. So that's one of the coaching themes that we're gonna uh, include in the schedule. Uh, but there might be other interests as well. For example, um, talking about code, talking about GitHub or version control, and our team of experts has 
um, a lot of experience in many different topics and come from many different disciplines. Um, so again, discussion sessions, we're gonna start, I think in three in week three, we are still confirming availability with experts. Um, so we might start in week four, but yeah, that's, we're gonna share the details about that later. Um, and as I was saying, there's some extra homework for you to join discussion sessions. In the welcome email this week, we um, shared the template that you need to fill out in order to access the sessions. Um, and if you already saw the email, uh, these are questions about your work and about your background and your interests. And these are questions for you to let your coach know what you want from them, what you can, what kind of support and what you want, what kind of questions you want to answer. Um, so what to expect about this? In the training calls, we are introducing resources. So it's just learning about everything that exists, like open licenses that Dafsia shared with us today. Um, that we will learn about many different tools for code and for data. And then the coaching sessions is the next step is asking, you can come with your own questions that are specific to your project or to your work. And you can ask um, for experts. For example, um, is GitHub right for my project? And how do I learn about it? How do I learn more about it? Or how do I choose a license for my project? And then you can come and share details about your specific needs and a coach will help you decide on a license. These are only some examples. There are also questions that are beyond the program. Um, and this might be discipline specific questions. For example, if you are a biologist and you want to ask uh, about a specific software that you can use to analyze, I don't know, for example, plant distribution patterns or other things that are very, very specific to your work, this might be out of a scope for the program. Uh, because experts might have experience in software, but not necessarily in planned analysis. And because there might be other questions that are beyond the scope of the coaching, we want to also be Did we just Lucy it in it? I think so. Uh, she has just broken up as, as well. The same issue as mine. <laughs> the internet has so not sad. been kind today. <laughs> you, can, you, you can say that uh, in a million ways. So it's just unfortunate. I hope that we, uh, we can get her back. Because yeah. I think she was about to say something very, very important. So. I hope we can get her back. I'm gonna do my best to do her slide and then we'll um, close down. Okay. Uh, so I think she was just reminding yeah. people about the co-working session. Uh -huh. So every Friday at okay. about yeah. um, 11 a.m. UK, which will be later or earlier, depending on where the world where in the world you are. Uh, we have sessions where mostly we tend to hang out and chat um, but this is a great place for coming to ask questions. Um, and if you have any other questions that, or it's a time zone where 11 a.m. UK, you're actually asleep or at work or feeding the kids, then um, email always works well. You can email um, the Nebula Cohort Management email address, um, and that will reach Irene and our resident fellow, Dora. Um Anything else, or shall we say we're actually already one minute over and send everyone uh, to freedom? <laughs> All right, I think we're done. Thank you for bearing with us whilst the internet's been so unkind. It's been really lovely to have you here, my friends. Have a lovely yeah. day. Yeah. yeah, sure. Okay, okay. Thank you so much.